Good morning, students. Myself, Amit Agarwal, Faculty of Management Department. Today, I am here to discuss the topic Export Promotion in India. Basically, this is the Unit uh, Four of International Trade. What is exactly export? Export it is a basically a bond activity when we are discussing about international trade. What is international trade? When you are trading the goods and services beyond the national boundary. In the national boundary, we discuss the two one uh, two points basically. One is the import, and the next is export. What is import? When you are just purchasing the goods and services from another country, a part of the India, so it is considered as import. And when you are selling the goods and services out of your country, it is considered as export. So today, what we are discussing, how to promote our export. Reason behind, we have to increase the level of our export because at the last, the Ministry of Commerce maintained the balance of payment, which shows the record of total imports and total exports of a country. If our import is more than to the export, it shows the negative. Record for our country. That is the negative balance of payment, and vice versa. As if export level is more than to the import level, so it shows that now your export part is more than to the import, and it shows a positive balance of payment for the country. So that it needs to study about export promotion. How do we promote the export? Export promotion. What exactly it is? Export promotion has been defined as those public policy. Measures which actually or potentially enhance export activity at the company, industry, or national level. Although many forces determine the international flow of goods and services, export promotion is one of the principal opportunity that government have to influence the volume and types of goods and services exported from area of jurisdiction. The reason behind. When we are promoting something, so people are just coming forward to take the participation in the export activities. As we know, keep since last many years, what we are finding when we maintain the balance of payment, the our imports are more than to the exports. So it becomes a important activity from the side of the economical aspect as Indian economy is concerned. In how to increase the export level of our country. As different measures has been taken by the government for promoting the export, a number of institutions have been set up by the government of India to promote exports. The export and import functions are looked after by the Ministry of Commerce. The government formulates the export import policies and program that give direction to that export. Uh, yes, students, as we know, even the things are not actually happening in the. Particular economy, society, company, or industry. So finally, government have to take action between it. As we know, that India it is a developing economy. In developing economy, we are partly interfered by the government and partly interfered by the two forceful factor of the economics that is demand and supply. So what we found that when the export level is not up to the mark. So what the government government is taking the initiations and the promotion. How we can increase the level of export so that the economical Level of our country can be updated. As we have taken some different initiatives for uh, sports promotion, I have taken three important zone how so that we can increase the level of export of our country. And the first is EPZ that is export processing zone, FTZ that is free trade zone, and the third is SEZ special economic zone. Basically, these three parameters and three initiatives help us how to increase the level of export of our country, as it is required just to maintain the economical value up to the mark level, and accordingly to the, how to maintain the balance between the import and export level of our country. Let I discuss what is exactly EEZ, Export Processing Zone. Export Processing Zone. Can be summarized as a unit bearing clusters of specially designed zone of aggressive economic activity for the promotion of export. The main concept of export processing zone was conceived in the early 1970 to promote the growth of shipping export business of India. Further, the meaning of export processing zone EPZ can be broadly defined 
as an area enjoying especially government of India support with respect to fiscal incentives, tax rebate, and other exclusive benefits for the growth of export. What is exactly fiscal incentive and tax rebate? When you are if you want to promote something, so finally you have to give some incentives and the rebate tax rebates to important activity like export. It is what we are discussing here. So you can increase the level of export of our country. So this is the one activity which is indicating like export processing zone. He how we can increase the level of export. So some zones are decided if you are lies in this zone. So exactly you will just get fiscal incentives and the tax rebates so that you can enhance the level of export of our country. We have taken some objectives of setting up of EPZ. Why we are just setting EPZ? What the basic objective just to behind this EPZ? As the first objective, just encourage and generate the economic development. Exactly, this is the basic requirement of our country. How we can develop the economical value of our country? As right now, what we are finding, what the GDP value of our country is going on? Just to encourage FDI, foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment when the people are just making the directly investment in the infrastructure to start any kind of the business activity into the latter country, it indicates to FDI. To channel the sources of foreign exchange within the system in phased manner. And increase in generate wider economic activities. To channel the foreign exchange earning. Encourage establishment and development of Indian industries and business enterprises and facilities with proper infrastructure generate employment opportunity. Basically, FDI, as we have discussed in the objective, it also helps us to generate the employment opportunities for country India also as well as outside of the country. Just to upgrade labor and managerial skills, acquire advanced technology for increased productivity, ensure world-class quality of product. These all are the objectives of EPJ. So finally, after studying the objective, the student can become like liable just to know the actual means of EPJ. How we can promote to export and just to promoting this export, EPJ is supporting to this basic activity. Second zone, we have taken free trade zone. As already name is giving the actual need of this free trade, given that trade is going to be free. We know about the liberalization policy of the government 1991. When the government just makes some economic reforms, after as you are going for the trade between the countries, so it is liberalized. It means freedom is there. Just to you can cross the national boundary just to trade either import or export. A free trade zone is defined as a specific class of specific economic zone. It is geographical area where goods may be landed, stored, handled, manufactured or reconfigured and re-exported under specific custom regulation and generally not subject to custom duty, designed to stimulate, to cust, uh, to stimulate economic growth. FTJ are often found throughout the world and around mode of transport hubs like major seaports, international airports and other location with a strong transportation. So this is the basic working of FTJ, free trade zone. It also promote, it also help us just to promote the level of export of our country as we are discussing how it is important for our economy. And the third point that is special economic zone. What is a special economic zone? STJ is an area in which the business and trade law are different from the rest of the country. STJ are located within a country, national border, and their aim include increased trade balance, employment, increased investment, job creation, effective administration. To encourage business to set up in the zone, financial policies are introduced. These policies typically encompass investing, taxation, trading, quota, custom and labor regulation. Special economic zones are also like when government is declaring that this particular zone is, comes under the export promotion. So some different benefits are providing. Those are coming to start their business on such specific zone and geographically areas are decided. So it comes in the 
third parameter how we can promote our export that is special economic zone so thanks students i think you will get a proper information for this topic thank you very much